did that. So visually, it was great. Uh, but the storyline, which was so thin, uh, and uh, like I wrote in my review, these are pandemic era movies. They're not, is not a whole lot of scope with these films. Uh, and what I mean by that is like the locales, it's like they're in one room and then they're in the next room, the next scene. Uh, it's not like they're in Japan and then the next scene they're in North America or just all over the place. You can tell the difference between big budget and something that's made for TV. And that's what this movie pretty much felt like. Um, again, it was very stylized, so it looked good, but it didn't have any depth, any storyline. And they even threw one character in there who is a virtual unknown. Now, I'm assuming everybody's seen this movie already, uh, so I can say that much. And this character didn't pertain to any of the uh, video game storylines. And he killed some of the actual video game characters that I thought that uh some of the originals should have taken care of like Oro and sub-zero i didn't want an unknown taking them everybody wants to see sub-zero and scorpion so it felt a little out of place in time but you know it for the entertainment value for sitting on the couch not having to get up and go somewhere i thought it was okay but very much a pandemic era movie it wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination uh so i'm going to give it a 6.7 a c if you will and that's my review on mortal kombat 2021. Like I said, bring it back up because I got to battle my girl Tracy. I got to go at her, man, because I won the first round with the uh, top five current men actors uh, living. Didn't I, Tracy? And I went at No, not at all. I didn't? No, not at all. Who won? I did. How? You had did Carol O'Connor as one of your top me. 10 actors. Huh? You had Carol O'Connor as one of your top 10 greatest actors of all time whatever i want to make a comment on what what you're saying about uh pandemic movies how they yes. don't have uh much of a storyline nowadays or or during most the of them. pandemic most of them i'm gonna i don't know if you were asleep or not on a lot of movies but that's that's pre-pandemic it's i mean i haven't really seen a lot of movies that actually have really good storylines in a long time <laughs> I know I you're trying to say it was just just Mortal Kombat, but I think I don't know if you mentioned this or if we mentioned this in prior shows, but the people, the producers and the writers are really not focusing anymore on the storyline. They're just giving you guys action and whatever comes from CGI. There's no more focus on a real storyline because they're kind of calling their audience kind of dumb. And that you guys would much rather see some bullets flying and some uh, computerized cartoons floating around. I mean, you are you don't want to be mentally stimulated. You know, that's basically what I'm getting when you when they don't take out the time to actually use any type of imagination and write a good storyline to keep those of us that really don't care so much about bullets and and monkeys and dinosaurs biting each other. We actually want to get engaged more. And Ouch, our imagination shot. works different. You know, our imagination works with what well, we can create in our minds with the storyline. So when you're not giving us that, then we're not gonna watch that BS. But the people, other people be, are stimulated by, you know, dinosaurs and gorillas biting each other. So I think that that's where they're, they said their money is on. People would rather come and watch dinosaurs and monkeys bite each other, throw each other from here to there, than a good storyline. I mean, because it's I mean, it's rare nowadays to find a movie with a good storyline. And one of the movies that I believe won an Oscar was called Nomad. I did see it. Where was the storyline in that? I mean, it just I basically, didn't... did you see it? No, I feel like I'm talking to just your forehead. You gotta move your laptop thing okay. down so I can see. Yeah, there you go. Right. And it, right. you know, it's, it's fell back again, so you probably have to hold it. I know you got your laptop from CVS Pharmacy, but you gotta give me something to work with. I did not Whatever. see that movie yet. I didn't see it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I see. I understand what you're saying, and I and I agree to an extent that it pretty much was happening before, but even more so now in this era where they're not spending money because, like I said, these movies now streaming network movies essentially are made for tv movies i mean they have a mm -hmm. cheaper budget than movie studios uh and this is what we this is what we are they're not putting there's no more Shawshank redemption type writing godfather taxi driver that's that's kind of gone by the wayside and i think you have superhero movies to thank for that because it's all about the big blockbuster um what they can make uh did i lose my co-host did i lose her said um 
make sure she gets back in there because we got to get right into this top 10. We're a little rusty, y'all, but y'all got to just bear with us. I don't know how we do. We get down. Uh, but Tracy, if you're there, just go ahead and log out and come back in because we're going to kick the mystics with this, with this top 10. And also, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on next week, we're going to be talking about without remorse. Uh, we reviewed that and we watched that. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, that's um, Michael B. Jordan's uh, latest thriller, Without Remorse. Uh, I could tell you how that was right now, but we're going to save that for next week uh, while we just wait for Tracy to come up. There she is. I'm back. I'm back. Good, good. And remember, pull that laptop down because I have an extreme close up of you. And, you know, we don't need to see your BDBs. I think you just got frozen again. You got to go back out and come back in, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do uh, Without Remorse. Next week, Mike will be Jordan. Uh, and following that, we got some big things that's lined up. We're going to have some special guests that will be coming on. Uh, but in just a couple of moments, we'll be covering the top 10 current female actresses that's living or active. Top 10. And I'm going to say this while she's not on here. I won the last battle with the top 10. Oop, there she goes. <laughs> Stop lying to our people, man. I did. I did win the last battle. You did you not. You know what? Your close-up is and that angle is kind of like you, you, you've never done this to me before. Yeah, just keep it like that. All right, let's get let's, let's get going. Let's get to going because we're a little fresh yeah, time anyway. Good. All right. So again, top 10 current or active actresses. We already covered the men the men. Top 10 actresses. Do you want to go first, Tracy, or you want me to go first? You can go first. All right, at number 10, I'm going with the young lady who we've we seen her grow up in television from 227. Uh, we've seen her playing uh, co-star in Thin Land Between Love and Hate and the movie Ray. Uh, and she's made her way all the way up to uh, Academy Award winning actress. Number 10, Regina King. Now okay. I'm coming in with a bang again, so you're going to have to get with it. You're going to have to get all right, with well, it. All right, well, as, just like with my male actors, um, my list is not in order. Oh, here we go I with that. I do not have a favorite female actor. For me, I would it would have to be I love everything you're in. Your acting just blows me away. When the movie goes off, I'm still thinking about how you did that. Now, that doesn't really describe anyone nowadays. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> with that being said, I'm going to give you a list of females that I enjoy watching their movies. Like if I if I I always I don't know about everybody else, but when I I do actually read the opening credits, okay. I think in this, you know, and if I see an actress on, you know, in the screen, which will be Nicole Kidman, I'm watching it. I'm sorry, that girl. You're freezing up, uh, Tracy. You're freezing up. I think you went with with Nicole Kidman at number ten, but you're freezing up right there. This is a little tough. They don't want us to get our show completed. And, uh, are, you, are you there? Yeah, can you I, hear me? Okay. Yeah, you, you're going in and out. I'm trying to see if I got on any paraphernalia that they don't want to be seen. And these are uh, African Americans, uh, women. I don't think that's a problem. Or the Cubs. I'm uh, uh, sorry, the Bears. If it was the Cubs, they wouldn't want me on. But you went in and out right there. So I thought they cut us off again. But go ahead. We'll, we'll start again with your number 10. My number 10 is Nicole Kidman. Did you hear that? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I like her movies. Well, I like what I've seen of her movies. Um, she has a way. I don't know if you, you pay attention to her movies, but there are sometimes when Nobody you don't even pays know it's her. To her movies. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes you don't even know it's her. I think she does a really good job of switching up characters, and you know, whatever she's, whatever role she's playing, you know, it grab, you know, it gets your attention and makes you more interested in watching the whole movie. Okay, you're number nine. Okay. All right. Uh, it's your list, so I have to respect it. Uh, my number nine, and, and you are a hater again, but I love her. I loved her in The Devil Rose Prada. Uh, I loved her in um, The Dark Knight Rises, and I'm going to go with Miss Anne Hathaway. I think she has uh, I think she has range. I mean, um, she's very gifted, very talented. Uh, she can go from here to there in a heartbeat, and I'm going to go with her. And she's young, so she still has a long way to go, and I think she's already made a great answer. She's going to need it. She's going to need it. 
<laughs> okay, I don't know but, what you think she's done that makes her worthy to be on anybody's list. Name me one movie, and you said Dark Knight Rises. I, I don't, you know, I don't remember have watching. The Devil Wear, have you seen the Devil, Devil Wears Prada? Yes, I have, and that have was seen, very, um, very common acting. I mean, it, it, she wasn't, she didn't have a part that blew me away. But keep going. What did she blow you away in? You don't have to be blown away. You have to be entertaining. There's and what there's, has she entertained you in? You're blown. Uh, what was the movie that she played with the three witches? The, the Christmas movie just over this past Christmas. Uh, I can't think of that think movie right now. I what think it was called Witches. I think it was called Witches. I think it was called Witches. It wasn't called Witches. And I play movies. It was called. Um, I'll we tell you in a second to, what it was. We have to Google our movies because he's. <laughs> it actually, he does, it, you know, he's not it actually was them. called. It was Roll Dolls, The Witches. It was called The Witches. I mean, that's okay. I don't know all the Robert De Niro movies. But he's a top three actor of all time. So yeah, uh, the witches. Uh, she so, was great in. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The witches. She was great in Devil Wears Prada, Dark Knight Rises, some other movies that she was pretty good in. But um, yeah, I like Anne Hathaway. What's wrong with Anne Hathaway choice? She shouldn't be on the list. She's not that good. But okay. okay. Again, my list is not in order. It's just that these are the ladies that I like to watch in movies. Mm -hmm. My number nine is Kate Winslet. She should be on your list too, since she's in your favorite movie. <laughs> Don't worry about if she's on my list right now. Don't worry about <laughs> all. And us, uh, and and we, I used to date her. In your dreams, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all you got to say about her. That's it. That's it. All right. Do we my have to replay eight. the reason why? Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. What were we about to say? Again, these women have not like blew me away with their performances, but I just, I'm just i just entertained when I see them in certain movies, but I don't have a favorite actress. So I don't really have a lot to say about all of them, but I do have some to say, something to say about. Go ahead, what's your number eight? All right, my number eight, and you got, you, you may be displeased with this, but- I'm always one, displeased with I, I get it. But the one performance that I was thrilled with was her performance, and people don't even like this movie, uh, but I thought she did a great job in Monsters Ball. At number eight, I'm going to go with Halle Berry because uh, in the 90s, in the 2000s, she had a, quite a significant run. Instead, I'm so glad you didn't show the picture from Oscars because that was just bad. But um, she has range, man. I'm telling you, she can play the cutesy romantic comedy chick. She can play a Bond girl. She can play a crackhead. She can play a woman who lost her mind because she lost her kid. Uh, and like in Monsters Ball, she was just, she just showed so much depth to me. Uh, whether you like the movie oh, or not. Oh yeah, we saw, we saw her depth. Yeah, we saw her, we saw, we saw Billy Bob Thornton go deep. I mean, we saw her depth. Yeah, we saw that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I got, so I got her at number eight. <laughs> no. Okay, no, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, you had to comment about that? I'm sorry. Holly Berry is not a good actress. The only reason why she got a lot of play in the 90s is because you guys, in men in general, thought she was just so beautiful. I, I get it, but she's she's not. She went out again. I don't we got some problems, man. I mean, she's up here giving the Republican response. I'm not hating on her actresses like that. Why you gotta hate on my actresses? Uh we're gonna give her just a few uh a few seconds to get back up. We've been experiencing some technical difficulties the last two weeks out there, movie heads. Uh, last week, they wouldn't let us go on at all. And now, this week, we had a 30-minute late start. So please forgive us our sincerest apologies. Uh, maybe it's time for us to think about moving to a different uh, service that will let us get our pro podcast going on uninterrupted. So uh, we're just going to give her a second to come back. But so far, I've got Regina King at number 10. Uh, Anne Hathaway at number nine and Halle Berry at number eight. Um, she should be coming up shortly. We'll see. We'll see what she, what happens. Uh, but drop a line down there if you want to drop uh, your top ten actors of all time. Okay, I'm sorry about that, Tracy. It kicked you out again, but I think you had to go. You was you was given the Republican response, hating on my Halle Berry pick. I don't know where I left off, but I did enjoy Holly Berry and losing Isaiah, but she's not, she does not have a lot of range. She's not that good of an actress as you guys hyped her up to be. You just like looking she at her. She wasn't good in Swordfish? Uh, I don't remember her role in Swordfish. I only saw that once back in the 90s, and I don't remember her role. 
She was just uh, very good in losing Isaiah because it, you know, it, the movie tagged of our emotional, emotional heartstrings. But other than that, no, she had a okay. horrible accent in Monsters Ball. You just wanted to kick her in her chin whenever she talked. That was horrible. Um, I wow. just don't enjoy watching her movies. I'm sorry, but anyway. Wow, gonna, you, you well, totally destroyed my pick. Wow. I'm, okay, I'm so it. sorry. Who's your number eight? My number eight is Charlize Theron. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right. You not guys know I'll butcher. But I, I now she has role, she has range, and she's you know the movies I've seen her in, she's pretty good. One movie that blew blew me away that she did was called Monster, where she uh, co-starred with uh, Christina Ricci. I don't know if you guys saw that came out I saw it was, a few times. You know, yeah, she's she's definitely good in, in the movies that I've seen her in. Well, I can tell you right now, I don't care how good she of an actress she is. I wouldn't put her on my list. I wouldn't even put her on my honorable mentions. It's personal reason. But anyway. Um, hater. Well, yeah. You can call me a hater if you want to. But I don't. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. You, I think you know why. Because mm, um, you're crazy. Yeah. Because what? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My number seven actress probably should be a little higher. But I'm going to go with her. Uh, Jodie Foster. Oh. And what made me a Jodie Foster fan, and if you ever seen this movie, you would be a fan. Accused, um, she showed the tenacity of a woman scorned, battered, beaten, raped, and she won. She overcame it, and that was based on a true story. And you just felt like that actually happened to Jodie Foster. Uh, she was good in that. She was good in Contact. She was good in uh, Panic Room. And <clears throat> I don't know if you guys remember uh, from her very early days. She was good. The girl down the street. Drive. Oh, Who? go ahead. I'm Who sorry. did you say? The girl down the street. You know, I never saw that. I don't even know if that's. If, if, that was I, one. I that was that was one of her first movies. I think she was anywhere okay. between twelve and fourteen. And well, that, yeah, that's the that same movie. age she was in Taxi Driver, which I thought she did a really good job. And she was in that. She was in the climax and scene in that movie, uh, mm -hmm. as young as she was. So I got to go with Jodie Foster at number seventeen award-winning actress number seven you mean <laughs> what did i say 17. <laughs> <laughs> wow dang number seven my bad my actually bad. actually marcus i did ping her as my number seven because i moved someone around and i'm gonna you know uh, piggyback off of what you said you're just stealing um, my number seven that's all you yeah, don't have yeah, anybody yeah, yeah. i'm winning yeah. the list so far so you're gonna try to steal mine so you can even yes, it sir. up no sir I, I don't know if Marcus, check it out whenever you get some time when you're not out street hustling. Look up this movie called The Girl Down the Street. I don't know if I'm exactly saying the title right. Um, she played a daughter of um, a single father. I really want to give it away what happens in this movie, but you never see the father in the movie and people in the neighborhood are harassing her because they think something's going on with her and her father. And that's all I'm going to say, because if I say okay. anything, you're going to be like, okay, I know what this is about. So check that out if you get a chance. I might check it out tonight. I might all check right. it out. I know I was supposed to watch Star Wars with some of my boys last night, because uh, yesterday was Star Wars Day, you know, whatever. But at number six, <laughs> for me, I'm going to go with, um, have, <laughs> I'm going to go with Kate Winslet. Um, because she's my crush. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you know, she's on my list. I mean, I, I just love her. She's, she's fine to me. I'm, I love her size. I love, wait a minute, I'm telling y'all all my little, uh -huh. I tell, but uh, no, I love, I love Kate Winslet. She's a great actress. I love her range. Um, what can you say about her? She's, um, very talented and she's not done. Um, you've got to put her at least in your top 10. Uh, if you like movie or thespian films, uh, and not those quick hot popcorn flicks. You gotta love Kate Winslet. So I got her right there at number six. Okay, I can't argue with that because, of course, she was on my list. You shouldn't but argue with any of my picks because I'm always right. If I, when I say it's not opinion, I'm just right. You all, you're always loud. You're not right. <laughs> anyway, uh, wow. again, my list is not in order, but I tend to like her in movies. She doesn't do a lot of big budget movies, but um, one of my movies that I like her in... Um, uh, what's the one with Lorenz? Will she play Lorenz Tate's mother? 
Um, if you say mother, I'm going to say Loretta Devine, Loretta Devine or um, nope, uh, or what's Suzanne, the name from Suzanne, um, Doug Suzanne Douglas? Oh, okay. I do enjoy her acting. Um, she, her, she then I think maybe it's the intense, the intensity in her her facial features when she's acting that makes me know that she's like really getting into her character. So I, what I, movie I do was that? It, was that the Inkwell? The Inkwell. Do you know how many times I watched that movie when I was? Is that uh, the woman with younger? the? Is that the one with the bubble eyes? The who? The one that played in Crooklyn, the mother from Crooklyn? No, that's Alfre Woodard. Okay, okay, so it's not her. Okay, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said the bubble eyes, <laughs> but that's the only feature I can recognize her from. But okay, that's, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Suzanne Douglas. Okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're now we're into the top five. So we're top five. We're into the actual. If you know about movies, then you gotta have these people in your top five. And once again, I I will assure you that my top five will be better than Tracy's. All right. So at number five, she was the quintessential America's sweetheart. Mm. And I'm telling you, you saw this movie, you fell in love with her ever since, and she's been great. Number five, I'm gonna go with Julia Roberts. I mean, from uh, Pretty Woman. Uh, to uh, Notting Hill, Aaron Brockovich. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. She's a great actress. She's, she's back to doing television now. Um, but yeah, you I mean, come on. What can you say wrong about Julia Roberts? She belongs in the top five. You know, she's probably top five of all time, not just current actresses. I gotta go with Julia Roberts. I love her. Uh, Sleeping with the Enemy, gotta go with her. What you got? Top five, baby. Now you you, gotta are, bring it. you are crazy. Number one, I didn't fall in love with Julia Roberts because you know that's not that's not how I get down. However, no. I loved her and still Magnolias, which is one movie you did not mention, and that's one of her best. I said there's so many movies you she got that she's great and all. I can't name them all. She she I was crying so hard. I, I don't even watch that movie because I don't want to cry. I mean, I all the make you cry. Okay, so my number five. Your number five should be Julia Roberts. My number five is an older lady. And I'm sorry, when it comes to movies, I think the older actors are more seasoned. You know, they, they've been around for a while. So I guess I kind of get in character. I mean, I kind of get involved in their characters a little bit more. But she doesn't do a lot of movies lately. I don't know if it's because of her age or whatever. But um, I like watching whatever movie I can find of hers. Is Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren is my number five. I love Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. I mean, she is probably the sexiest older woman I've ever seen in my life. And mm -hmm. I love her for that, man. I'm not going to lie. Do you guys see a pattern of his I don't care. Tonight? I don't I mean, care. Listen, every woman on this list he wants to sleep with. <laughs> this is hey. possible. You must be in love with that act and not anything else i am in love <laughs> with her acting and i loved her in the queen and i love her but she's i mean come on man i mean helen mirren is whoo whoo okay okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay my number four and i'm just gonna throw this movie out here because this is like her light work um thor ragnarok she played the villain in that she played the villain in uh, Cinderella. Kate Blanchett. I mean, you have to bring it to come up with an actress today that's better than Kate Blanchett. Uh, and I'm not even being funny. Kate Blanchett is one of the top five actors. I got her at four right now, uh, but she's definitely top five actress probably all time but definitely current and active. I'm going with Kate Blanchett. You gotta bring it, Tracy. I mean, your, your top five star. I, I am so story. sorry. And I have to agree with you, Marcus. I don't know why she's not on my list. She just slipped my head, but I do agree. I do <laughs> enjoy her movies. I do look for, like I said, uh, opening credits or even just a description, the movie description. I wanna know who's in it. If Kate Blanchett's in it, I'm definitely gonna. So you're, I agree with your selection. You better agree. Rare. You should, I know it's rare, but that's your fault. You should be agreeing with 
all of my selections. So yeah. My number, number four. My number four. She's another older actress, but seasoned. I love her and what she does. I sometimes I have to because I'm so used to her having red hair when she plays her characters that when she's not redheaded, I look for her piercing eyes. And I'm like, okay, I know who she is. This is going to be a decent, or either her role is going to be good or the, her role in the movie is going to be good. Julianne Moore is my number four. Is that the one who replaced Jodie Foster in Signs of the Lambs or no? How can she replace, what what movie are you watching where some, uh, what I, movie I'm, is that? I'm just trying to see if I got the right actress. Um, you How know did she I'm, replace I, Jody, Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lamb? No, not, yeah, remember Agent Starling, she played in Hannibal. Is that the same woman? I didn't, I didn't see that one. I think that's her. Um, I, you know what, she I, have I got red it. Hair? I got, <laughs> she has red hair. I think that's her. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. Yeah, this this it, it has to be her. Didn't she also play in um Yeah, that's her. Julianne Moore. She played remember Hannibal was the sequel to The Silence of the Lamb. Right, right, right. And Jodie Foster would not come back. She didn't want to do the sequel. So they got her to replace her. She actually played Agent Clary Starling. Now she How wasn't she a do? different detective. She was the same detective, but they got her to play the role. But that's her. Yeah. Oh, okay. Julianne Moore. Cool. cool. Yep, that's her. Uh, that's a good choice, I guess, for you, you know, <laughs> if that will float your boat. Okay. All right. My number three, I was introduced to this uh, actress in Mississippi Burning. Uh, she was the one, and you know, I, I hate when they have these civil rights movies and white person is the savior and all that kind of stuff. But she was the one that tipped off the feds, Gene Hackman and Willem Dafoe, as to what happened. And mm -hmm. her husband beat her uh, and then the scene I liked the best was when Gene Hackman came back and beat her husband in the barber shop. Uh, so number three, I'm going to go with Frances McDormand. Now she has like won two best action actresses awards, Oscars within the last three or four years. So she's doing a thing right now and you got to give it to her. All her movies has depth. Uh, she was actually the actress in Nomad, Tracy. Uh, but again, I have oh, not she seen was the, She was the main character? She's the lead, yeah. But she just won the Academy Award. Uh, last hmm. week, but I haven't seen that movie, so my jury is out on that. But I do know that Frances McDormand uh, has a heck of a resume, and I got her sitting at number three. Okay, I'm not gonna touch that because um, I have seen the movie. I know I you're gonna shoot I, it down. You I know I'm do. not gonna shoot it down. I don't think she was the lead, but I think I remember her okay. being an older lady in the movie, so I, I would well, have she to. She won Best Actress, so that's why I said she was the lead. So I don't know. Oh, I gotta okay. see the movie. Okay, maybe then that's her. She it doesn't look like her to me. I would think she would. Okay, how old would Frances be now today? I'd say she's in her early sixties, mid sixties. I don't think the leading lady. Hey, I don't know. That's her. I, okay. I know. I know the movie. She won Best Actress, Frances McDormand, No Man. Okay, well she she did a good job if the movie had a storyline. Okay, said so cue up my part. Number three, my number three actress does not get the credit she deserves. And I'm thinking it's because she doesn't have any eyebrows. I don't know why you guys <laughs> slammed her. She hasn't oh, had a role that she wasn't good in. Color purple, ghost, how Stella got her groove back. Boys Sister on the Act. side, boys on the sides, boys on the side, which is one of my favorite movies of Whoopi Goldberg's. She, she doesn't get the credit she deserves. You guys might not like her. Uh, Sister Act was okay. Sister Act was hilarious. So she showed a comedic side also. Jumping okay. Jack Flash. Okay, okay. I, oh, come on. Let's not talk about Jumping Jack Flash. I'm not going to tell you how many times I watched that movie when I was a little girl. But just want to say, she does not get the credit she deserves. And I think it's because A, she doesn't have eyebrows. B, she messed around with Ted Danson when he made that remark and, 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 dressed in uh, blackface and stuff like that. After that happened, you know, black people kind of kicked it to the curb. But you cannot deny her range. This no eyebrow heifer has range. And she does not get the credit she deserves. Can we cue up her in color purple, see it? Is he, is it coming? I think Sarah went to sleep. You told her to beat me. No, that was Oprah. Here we go. Oh. 
Is she about to do this? <laughs> I should have locked you up and she just let you out to work. The day you plan for me is the one you're gonna ride in. You tell him, girl. Get the car, get the car. I'm gonna knock you. <laughs> I knocked you up on <laughs> What you done to me? I've already done Everything you. Everything you've done to me. Already done to you. <laughs> Woo! I'm poor. Black. Black. I may be ugly. <laughs> but God. I'm I'm <laughs> I gotta give it to you. I gotta give it to you. Oh, oh that was hey, that's she did her thing in that movie, but if you guys want to trip on something, her and Danny Glover came back, I want to say in 2005 to pair up as husband and wife mm -hmm. on a showtime movie called Good Fences. Oh my god. She blew that off the. She blew that out the water too. I saw that. I saw that. You movie. saw that. Yeah. I, I, I watched that movie so many doggone times. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg is I, Whoopi Goldberg is actually underrated. As good as she is, she's underrated. She doesn't get the credit, like you said. She doesn't get the credit she deserves. Um, and I, if I had a favorite actress, she'd be it. And as a matter of yeah. fact, since I don't have a favorite actress, I'm going to let her hold that spot until somebody knocks her yeah. out. Because, you know, I just don't. The girl has range. Name a role she has not played. And you'd be like, damn. I, the, I problem, mean, the problem with Whoopi Goldberg. And she does not have eyebrows. I get it. Yeah, no, no. I, I agree with everything you said. Uh -huh. Reluctantly. Because it's you. <laughs> but, but the problem with Whoopi Goldberg is... As great as she's been in her roles, her greatest role was 1985's The Color Purple. The Color Purple. She hasn't that done anything. Great. She hasn't done anything better than that since then. That's not to say that everything she's done was terrible. She's been great, but I need more Time greatness. Out. Time out. Time out. Have you seen what did she do that was Time better out. than The Color Purple? Time out. You can't blame that on Whoopi. No, I'm not blaming. Look, her. Wait, I'm hold not. on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You cannot blame that on Whoopi. Whoopi was given a role. She was given a character and she did her thing. Now, what made the no movie, you know, was Steven Spielberg. You need to blame the fact that we don't have good writers anymore. Not Whoopi. I'm because not blaming her, but still, you still have to, as an actress or as an actor, you have no. to be a little bit more selective. And what, what I'm saying no, is she no. has not been able to headline movies and she should have. But that's Maybe not her, her fault. Agent. Maybe it's her... That's not that's Maybe it's her, her, uh, her, her, her being black and choosing certain roles. I don't know. It's not no. her fault. But what I'm no, saying is, no. I just that agree. movie came I out just... in 1985. She should have done something better than that. You can't be, you can't be an all-time great and your last, last movie was 1985. Marcus, you're considered a good actor or a good actress if whatever role, character you play, you do your shit. It's not her fault. That a Tracy. nobody's making. Uh, 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 hear me out. It's not her fault that she has not been cast in any more greater movies. But the roles Who's that she has, it? and and you can't say she hasn't been. Th that was the most dramatic feeling role that she has had. But that was because of Steven Spielberg. And but also, I don't, I don't say, get what you're saying. It's just because of Steven Spielberg, there were there were many roles. My number two. Is doing all the roles that Willie Goldberg should be doing. Uh -oh. That's a great segue. Uh, at number two, you cannot tell me that there are there weren't roles for Willie Goldberg when there was Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. There was roles that she could have played in How to Get Away with Murder. There were roles that could have been tailor made for Willie Goldberg had she chose them. But she chose to sit on a mantle and do a talk show. And number two took all the roles, and that is the one and the only Viola. Davis, you can't tell me that this woman is probably number one. I should have gave her number one, but I didn't want to be disrespectful to who I got as number one. But this woman, you're talking about Whoopi Goldberg, and it's not her fault because she didn't have any roles. This woman would take a movie like Suicide Squad and make it her own 
She was the star in Suicide Squad. She was she outshined Denzel Washington in Fences. Nobody outshined Denzel Washington. Nobody. But she did it. This woman is a headliner. She don't co-star and she don't bow to anybody. Her and Chadwick Bubba, man, it was, it, it was it was a crime that she didn't win Best Actress uh, for Ma Rainey's Black, Black Bottom. Okay, I get it. They want to minimize her ceiling. But we all know that this woman is the rangest. If you pick the best actor, man or woman, best actor today, it goes to Viola Davis. Oh, I'm sorry. I took too long. I know you ain't talking about nobody took too long. Please. First of all, like, I'm going to make this real quick because this is going too long. <laughs> First of all, I will give it to you. She did very well in Fences. She did. Because that was there a long drive movie. And she, if it wasn't for her part in it, you know, I don't know where it would be because that was an eight hour movie. Anyway, she stood out like a sore thumb in Suicide Squad because that was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And she should have turned that role down, in my opinion. But anyway, my, are, are we on number three or number two? We're on number two. My number two person is my girl, we all remember her from 227, playing Brenda, the little spoiled brat. She went all the way from Brenda to Poetic Justice, and now the girl is running things. Let's give a hand to number two, but not really number two, because these are not in any order. Miss Regina King, that's my girl. Yay, there she go. <laughs> this, this in a nutshell, this tells you how far apart you and I are. I had mm -hmm. her as my number 10, and you got her at number two. Because you're my number you. one. And my number one, you've never you haven't mentioned yet. Wow. I love Regina King, but not yet. She, she's not she's not top five yet. She has a long way to go uh in her career. She will some at someday be number two, but not now. All right, are y'all ready for number one? Are you yeah, ready? Whatever. Are you ready? The top Whatever. female actress, probably of all time. Forget current or active. And if none of us have mentioned this name already, you should know who it is. It is none other than the great Meryl Streep. <laughs> I dare you, I double dog dare you to tell me she's not worthy of number one and you don't even have her on your list shame on you shame on you <laughs> go back and see go back and revisit sophie's choice go back and visit that go back I'm and gonna, uh, revisit i'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna argue i'm not gonna argue you I'm can't kidding. you can't argue it if you try to <laughs> you would be reaching you can't argue the great meryl street now bring your number one bring it well see <clears throat> my list isn't in order Oh, get out of there. You just know you can't mess with me on that That's all. My list isn't in order. I do love this woman. I fell in love with her when I saw her in one of the only, well, one of my favorite Spike Lee movies. I think it is my favorite Spike Lee movie. Crooklyn. Alfre Woodard. I think she's a, I do like seeing her movies. Again, shut up. Shut up, Marcus. I'm my, not list saying not, my list is not in order. So I'm not saying she's the number one of all time or she's my favorite or she's you guys know Whoopi Goldberg is my favorite but like I said okay. I put this list together and these are just the women that I like watching the movies that they're in I didn't my number one did not beat out Marcus just because my list is not in order but you guys know you don't even have my I, number one on your list uh, hey you miss my you miss Helen Mirren so you can't talk and that's your that's, your, a, that's, that's because your. I'm upset with her because we broke up so I don't want to put on my list <laughs> that's so, why Again, I do not have a favorite actress or actor, but I will let Whoopi Goldberg hold that spot until someone proves otherwise. You know what? I, what I, I, I got about her not being in a good movie since uh, Color Purple. This is Mark. I, I never said that. Justice. I never ever said that. In fact, See, I said. Riding the car with boys. He has in not fact, seen I said that she's done a lot of great movies, but it is reasonable to suggest that her best performance was The Color Purple. That's not a knock. I'm simply okay, let saying- me Okay, let me say this. How many actors and actresses have one good, solid movie that they did better than anything? Everyone has one. You named me one actor or actress nope. that, that knocked out every movie they ever did. 
Because you don't have to knock out every move, but you can be progressively better. Like, but sh- okay, well, me, you can't do Robert better Niro, than your best. Wait, Robert De Niro and hold Al Pacino. You, you cannot do better than your best. You're that only going to have one. No, no, no. Okay. Robert De Niro was can't miss in the 70s. Uh, and, and Al Pacino was can't miss. Uh, Marlon Brando was Al, can't okay, every Al Pacino, Alan Pacino was good. What was his best movie? Den- Denzel watched Al Pacino's best movie. Uh-huh. Was Al Pacino's best movie was probably The Godfather 2 because that was okay. more about and him. Okay, you're trying to say that he went just flying up since The Godfather Part 2. Oh, absolutely. Carlito's Way? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, in my opinion, Carlito's Way was his best movie. I'm talking about from, I'm not talking about a story. I'm talking about the actor and his role. I, I disagree. I think an actor is always going to have a movie that just knocked it out the box. And, and even, even a, even a, even a, even a uh, music artist is going to have that one album he cannot top, but that doesn't mean that they still don't make good music and they're still not good at what they do. You're saying that she should be defined by just that one movie because it was good. No, I mean, I'm not saying, no, I, I, you, you, misconstrued, you misconstrued what I said. Mm-hmm. I said, that's her best. It's, it's, it's okay because Michael Jackson's best album, in my opinion, was Thriller. Doesn't mean okay. that's the more. So let's, okay. hold on. Okay, my, let's use that for an example. Let's use that for an example. If hold on. No, no, no. I don't want to just stay on that because okay. you're a Prince fan and I want you to try to pick my next part. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that was back in 1983. Whoopi Goldberg's 1985. 36 years, if you're a great actress, at some point, just like Mike, uh, Denzel Washington did Malcolm X, but he was equally good in uh, Training Day. He had more bangers. He's not only known for Malcolm X. He's known for other greats. She's known for other greats, too. She won an award for Ghost. I don't get what you're saying. She was a bit. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying her best performance was was Color Purple. Would you agree that her best performance was Color Purple? Yes, but she's she's still good in every role since Color Purple. I I agree. I I agree with that. Okay, so, saying, so let's let's go back to your example said, of Michael Jackson. I said, that the and knock on, I said that the knock on her, that's the knock on you her was what? that she hasn't done a movie better for herself than, than 1985's The Color Purple. She should have had a string of heavyweight movies to cement her legacy Marcus, as a number one. Marcus, every, on, you're only going to get one your, your movie And that's where we disagree. Album. We disagree right. with that. If every if you're mm. gonna have one that's better than everything else, you so you what? keep telling me so you can't you cannot tell me that your favorite actor or actress doesn't have one move that they have not topped. And if, Eddie they, and kept, if they Eddie had, Murphy kept bringing okay. it, Eddie Murphy kept Eddie Murphy no. kept outdoing himself in the '80s, and then he returned a decade later with two Nutty Professor movies that was funnier than anything he ever did. And then there's, like, no, it's gonna be one movie that Eddie Murphy was. Great in and everything else was good. It's you That's I understand your point. Okay, Eddie you Murphy know what? was great in 48 hours. We're he was gonna great take, in no, no, places. No, 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 I'm not saying the he was the part is, saying he wasn't. Is that I'm I always you. beat you in these lists. You had you know Alfie Woodard number one, and then you no, try didn't. to say no, and then try to say that my, my list ain't ranked. You, you that didn't. was never a mention of freaking Meryl Street. We're going to poll this in the group. We're going to pull this in the group. We'll talk about this later, but this will What's be Goldberg our argument. This will be Goldberg argument. We're going to have a discussion in the group about this because we got to end this. <laughs> We've been on for a longer time. My number one was, I told you again, my list is not in order. I just enjoy Alfred Woodard's movies just a little bit. Maybe she reminds me of an aunt. I don't know. But whatever. You forgot Helen Mirren, so you made some mistakes too. That doesn't atone for your sins of, of omitting Mel Street. Oh, we we not done with this Whoopi Goldberg argument, but we do have to end the show. Okay. <laughs> we, we can make Whoopi Goldberg a whole show next week if you want to do that. I have no problem. Okay. I have yeah. absolutely no problem. So huh? the poll, you come up with the poll first. I know you're going to try to tailor it to what you think. Only thing I said was that she should have done a better movie than something okay, way back in she done a better movie. If she done, wouldn't that be her top movie? How can you top your top? You should have done something one, else in it's only one, years. It's only one spot at the top. 36 years? Number one. You cannot be number one three times. You're that's, just like saying, that's just like saying Richard Pryor is the GOAT. Comedy has been progressive. He cannot be the GOAT unless you're saying that comedy was only if funny. You, in the if you think that Color Purple was her best movie 
fine. But I'm saying she has done good movies since then. Absolutely. She even won an award in Ghost. I mean, absolutely. You're I only, only said that you're she up, done there's only room at the top for one. In 36 person. years, she should have done something else. She so Viola Davis have. Viola oh Davis God, has the best. Movie. She's done ghosts. She's done boys. She's won awards for but these. But none of them movies. were better than none of them were better. You're not going TV. to beat your best. What is but, wrong with you? You have her. Denzel beat. did. Denzel well, did. And that would be his best. That would okay, be his best. But he did it after his first best. Viola Davis. There is no better. such thing as a first best. You even you. There's only one spot, a number one, and that's it. No, nope, that was because, his best movie. Because everybody said that Beverly Hills Cop was Eddie Murphy. You know what? I'm about to, to come, me, I'm about to come read your neck. You just I'm, mad, man. You just, you, you just have a best 36 years ago. Hey, we got to get up out of <laughs> here, man. I argue with her all the time, and she know it ain't over. But we got to get up out of here. We are way past our time. Yes, but we are. We're going to see y'all. What did you say, Tracy? Yes, we are. We're way past our time. We're way past. All right. We're going to see y'all next Wednesday. Same bet place, same bet channel. Tony in. Tracy Marcus live at the movies. And 